Hi everyone and uh, welcome back to the Western Centurion channel and the uh, third and final installment of the uh, trilogy that I've been putting up over Christmas. Um, welcome to Christmas Eve first of all. Hope you're all having fun, hope you're all excited. I know I am, waiting for Santa to come tomorrow and see what he's brought for me. So I don't think it's going to be any locos but we can all live in hope can't we? Um, but yes, so Today, um, I know I said that part of it is going to be um, to do with eBay and alcohol. Believe me, not a good mixture. So I want to tell you and share that little story with you. Pretty exciting anyway. Um, but first of all, I thought I'd explain to you um, why the Western, Centur Western Centurion channel is called Western Centurion. Um, so I'll take you back to September, I'll try and get through this quick, but back in September, it was my birthday on the 12th, and on Saturday the 13th was the Swindon Railway Model Exhibition at the Steam Museum. Uh, so my wife and I went there, had a lovely day, and as you do when you go to railway exhibitions, you try and buy something as a memento. And uh, I was just browsing around the uh, Cheltenham Model uh, store and uh, noticed something snuggled in amongst all the other locos. And the name on it caught my eye. Um, and I thought, I remember that name from somewhere. So I picked it up and uh, had a close look at it. And it was this. The Western Centurion D10 26. Fabulous model. But again, why Western Centurion? I'll try and get that. I hope that's gone into focus for you. But yes, why the name Western Centurion? Well, you see, in the last uh, video, update two, sorry, uh, from yesterday, um, I showed you the maps didn't I, and uh, Wardenbasset Junction, and the fact that I used to sit on the platform with the goods shed. Well, it was one of those days I sat there, and D1026, Western Centurion, pulled up on the siding, pulling freight, and just sat there, uh, ticking over, waiting for the intercity to go by. Um, and it was then that I plucked up the courage to jump off the platform, go up, knock on the cab door and uh, ask the driver if I could have a look around. And he said yes. So um, he let me up into the cab, let me sit in the seat and I remember he explained to me the instruments, what they all did. Um, and the next thing he did was to take me on a guided tour down here along a little cat walkway. Tour. Um, I remember that it was all like um, metal grids, um, which you could see through. The two really big Maybach engines, one here, one there. Um, so that was, what were they? They were about 1,300 horsepower each, uh, with a total of 2,000 when they were pulling. So a lot, a lot of pulling power there. And... Um, well, this one tick over, the, the whole thing was shaking. I remember that so clearly. You held onto the handrail inside, you could feel it vibrating. And uh, the noise, my God, that noise was incredible. Um, and the smell, uh, I'll, I'll never forget it. I will never ever forget that day. And uh, so when we got home, I took it out of the box and uh, I had some track set up in the in the dining room on the floor so I ran her on that and it was it was fantastic and it was after that when I decided I want to share all my experiences really on uh, YouTube with you lot and uh, that's why I decided to call the channel Western Centurion because that name does actually mean something to me from my childhood all right and the good news is is that after this little bit of the video, we're going to do a running session 
and uh, D1026 will be running on the bit of track right behind me. Okay, now get on to the second part, eBay. Right, a few weeks back, probably about six weeks ago, on a Saturday I believe it was, um, my wife Debbie and I were having a good day, having fun. Um, I think I just finished doing um, a layout update in here. And when I went out for lunch, she had a nice cold beer waiting for me. So, really enjoyed that. It was a lovely day. It was a bit sunny outside as well. And um, we just got to playing some games and uh, had a few more drinks. Um, then, yeah, we had a couple more after that, I do believe. Um, and then maybe another four or five after that. And it was getting to early evening. Um, and I got onto eBay. Now I've previously looked on eBay, um, looking for some more Westerns, uh, well Class 52s. Um, and what I found was the Western Enterprise, the D1000, which was the very first Enterprise to roll out of, uh, very first Western to roll out of Swindon Works, back in 1962, I believe. Um, It was nice. It was one that came from the Steam Museum, one of a limited edition of 400, um, but it's a starting bid of 250 pounds. It's like, geez, no, no, that's really nice. I would like it, but no, out of the question. So I started looking for um, something similar, and I found um, what's it called, a Helgin. Helgen, or however you want to pronounce it, um, Helgen, well, I'm sure you all know who, <laughs> what I mean, but I hope I pronounced it correctly anyway, and um, I found one for £61, I bid on it, and I think it went up to about £76 or £80, and I won it, and there it is. So I now have, alongside my Western Centurion, I now have the very, uh, or a copy of the very first D1000 to roll out of Swindon Works, the Western Enterprise in desert sand livery. Now I was unsure about the front because I never thought they had yellow ends. Um, but I can't find any on the internet to do with yellow ends. Detailing's not that fabulous on it. I'd be a little bit disappointed to be honest with the price that I've paid. Um, but so yes, yeah, I was happy with that, and um, the the urge to actually buy a Western Centurion had now been uh, Western Enterprise had now been satisfied. So at some point or other that night, we've gone to bed. Unfortunately, we can't remember going to bed. We had such a good time, and I say alcohol, drank way, way too much. Naughty we were, but boy, it was good fun. And um, we then got up in the morning and uh, went through our day, did our business on Sunday, Sunday lunch and everything, and went to bed early, because I had work Monday. I woke up Monday morning at about half past four, um, sat downstairs, had a coffee, wake myself up, ready for work. I then went up to the bedroom at about quarter to six with a coffee for, for Debbie, my wife. And um, she said, do we bid on anything over the weekend? I said, no, I don't think so. She said, um, you sure we didn't bid on anything Saturday? I said, no. So I went and had a look on my, uh, on my computer and the eBay page was open and there was nothing there. So I went back to her and said, no, 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 everything's absolutely fine. Um, but then I went back to the computer and I remembered I was looking at a little old um, Dapple 14XX and a Hornby 14XX, which I fancied putting a bid on. So I had a look at those and they were going a bit out of my price range. For, for something of that age 
and um, I then click back to the page with the uh, Western Centuri uh, Western Enterprise from the uh, museum, uh, Steam Museum, and well, to say the least, we did put a bid in. And um, two days later on Tuesday, I won the bid, £250 for a Blinky Loco. So you see, for me, that tale sort of says, well, don't drink and drive, and certainly don't drink on eBay. Um, bit of a shock, obviously had to find a way of paying for it, which we did. And here she is, made by Dapple. Only 400 of them were commissioned by um, the Steam Museum in Swindon. As you can see, there's no yellow panels on the front, but the detailing is fabulous. So much more. And the bogeys, if you look, sit nice and straight. But if I pick this one up, and see how they hang down. Bit of a difference, and the colour is different. Um, was it worth it? For me, yes, yes. I will now say it was worth it. And that when it now she's turned up, and I've got her in my hands, and I have a good look at her and seen her run. Yes, yes, it was worth it, even for two hundred and fifty pounds. Um, lovely for my collection. I'm very proud to have her. Uh, she didn't, she ran out the box but there was no directional lighting. Now I wasn't sure whether that was because uh, a DCC chip hadn't been fitted but then I remembered that my Western Centurion directional lighting did run out the box and that was without a DCC chip. So what I basically did, I took the, the shells off both of them, took the blanking chip out of the Western Centurion and put it into the Western Enterprise. And lo and behold, she ran with all directional lights. Fabulous. Um, so really it was just a blanking chip. But I'm not going to buy another one uh, because I'll be put, fitting DCC sound to both of them. So I'll wait and save my money up for that. But yeah, definitely worth it, and I, I am pleased I've got it. There's a lot of money, but I'll just have to spend the rest of 2015 paying it off. Um, she's lovely, and I'll be doing a running video of her as well today, as well as the, um, the Helgen as well, so we can compare them. Um, I'll do some close-up shots when they're on the track, because it'll be a lot easier for me to do it that way. All right, a little bit of history about her. Um, well, Western Enterprise was built in, let me see, I've got it here, I, sh I should have remembered it really, but the 20th of 12th, 1962, the first loco to roll out of uh, Swindon. Um, she came out in desert sand, I believe, I'm not sure, but I think she was the only one to come out of desert sand. And although she's called Western, en sorry, Western Enterprise, I keep getting my it was for Centurion, but Western Enterprise. Um, she was originally going to be called Cheddar Gorge. Because um, during the, the design process, they weren't going to be, um, they were going to be called uh, from uh, place names in England. Uh, but towards the end of completion, they, they decided not to. And hence, Western Enterprise was born. All right, so... What I'll do now, I'll get them on the track, okay, and I'll give you a little bit of a running session. It'll be my first proper running session on a video. They've all been tested, obviously, but um, sharing the running with them, this is the first time to show you, okay? So you bear with me, I'll get everything set up, and I'll be back again, okay? See you in a moment, bye. Welcome back. Again, um, as you can see, I've got three locos now set up on my fiddle yard. 
actually managed to put it to some use now. Um, I have Western Centurion is on your left, as you can tell by the blue and the full yellow ends. The Halgin uh, Western Enterprise is in the middle and the Dapple Western Enterprise is on the right. Um, what I do, I do a running session for each. I'll just go around the track once, um, which I temporarily put up here just for this purpose. Um, so you can see the difference between the three, okay? To be honest, when running there isn't much, but for the detail there's quite a bit. Alright, so let's get started. We'll take Western Centurion out first, shall we? And off she goes. As you can see, she's got no, no directional lighting or interior lighting. But she runs very smoothly at low speed. Actually, what I might do then, I'll, I'll take them around twice, so you can see what they're like at low speed. Camera there. Now what I'll do, I'll go and give her a bit more juice. to keep up by hand. <coughs> and as I bring her back onto the um, fiddle yard again, can you something that's a bit special about Western Centurion today? Change the point. Because it is actually her birthday. 51 years ago today, she rolled out of Swindon Works. So 1026, 51 years ago today, was born. And, um, but sadly, she was uh, scrapped in 1976. Um, nothing, nothing's left of her, not even the nameplate apparently. And uh, Western Enterprise was born uh, 52 years ago on the 20th of December. So which one shall we take out next then? We'll come around, we'll change points. We'll take out the halogen, shall we? Let's have a look.
See, she still sounds sounds quiet. Very smooth running. But no directional lighting. No cab lighting, only uh, name board lighting. Drop a bit. So we'll bring the halogen back in. Now I'll just change points. You have excuse me about this, but the bench is in the way as well. Right, okay. A little bit noisier. She does have directional lighting and cab lighting. Camera here, and I'll go turn the lights off. Okay.
And that's it. Um, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed the first running session with me. That's fabulous. I couldn't even begin to describe how it feels to actually have something running again. Um, and out here in the garage on a partial layout. Um, yes, I hope you really enjoyed it. I'll have to uh, have to finish it there now, as I've got to go out anyway, but so I won't be able to play anymore. Um, so yes, thanks for joining me whilst I ran the three Class 52s that I have, and I hope to get some more in the future as well. I'd like to really like to uh, collect as many as I can with the different name plates on the side. Um, so yeah. Fabulous. I'm so pleased, pleased you could have been here with me whilst I did it. And I've hoped you enjoyed the video. Um, I suppose really lastly, it's just for me to say um, Merry Christmas. And I hope you all get what you want this year. And I wish you all the best for 2015. And keep those videos coming. I really enjoy watching them. They, they are fantastic. And, um, and I will do some uh, um, reviews on these locos once I've sussed out how to do it properly and how to get some good focus pictures okay so until then Merry Christmas everyone thank you very much for joining me and uh, all the best for 2015 and I'll see you then alright goodbye